are living in luxury out here. Got two cars, mine's packed full of supplies. Amy's has a bed in it. So we slept in the back of Amy's car in a real bed last night. This morning, cooking up some bacon, making some coffee, gonna make some scrambled eggs, and we're saving some money by doing it this way. We're not paying for hotels, we're not eating at restaurants very much. This also allows me to eat as much as possible. So it's a lot cheaper to eat in bulk this way when you're cooking it rather than going to restaurants. Something I think we realized with the last section is that the hiker hunger is ramped up a notch and me especially, I'm not eating enough. My energy levels have been really low and um, I think I need a lot of protein and fats. So we're cooking up like a whole pack of bacon. <laughs> <laughs> Amy must be happy this morning. Is that all right? Well, I'm not. Well, it's just me and Echo again. Uh, Amy's taking this section off to give her body some time to heal up. Um, her knees were really hurting her, um, especially on one of the days on this section near the end. Uh, and they're still hurting pretty bad today. So I think it's the smart call uh, for her to take some time off and listen to her body. Luckily, we have the luxury of having our cars. We can basically treat the rest of the CDT as individual section hikes and each one can be a different situation. Um, it has its pros and cons. It takes that adventure of a continuous feeling of a through hike away, um, but it also gives us a lot more freedom. And I think at this point, that's more important. Um, we need to remember what this hike is about and um, not just push through for the sake of pushing through. So I just have about a 55 mile section, looks like relatively straightforward hiking, um, should be pretty quick. Starting off another morning wearing every layer of clothing that I have. Man, it seems like as soon as it turned into September that fall is here. It's been cold every night. Starting off every morning in the mid-twenties. I was hoping that wouldn't happen so soon, but I think we're going to have to start changing out some of our gear. My sleeping bag isn't warm enough anymore. My clothes aren't quite warm enough. 
these mornings are kind of rough. But it still warms up quick. In a couple hours, I'll be taking off my layers again. I think Amy and I are a good kind of contrasting example of how important childhood is uh, when it comes to your entire life, basically. Um, the more that Amy shares about her childhood and her early adult years, um, the more clear it becomes that we were not dealt the same hand of cards in life. A lot of things happened to her in her early years and early adult years that were not her fault, that were very bad. And those have had lasting effects all the way up until now, and they probably will last for her entire life. Me, on the other hand, I've been extremely lucky, and I didn't realize that until I started meeting people like Amy who have had um, bad childhoods and have had bad things happen to them. Um, of course, when I was growing up, I thought that that's how everybody grew up. But I grew up in a household with two very supportive parents. Um, money was never really an issue. I wouldn't say we were rich, but I never really felt the pressure of money in our family. Uh, we could always afford the things that we needed. And that alone is a huge privilege. On top of that, um, I always had pretty good friends in my life too. I was never a very social person, but basically for my whole life I've always had a strong core group of friends of really good people. And I've always had good people in my life. It's partly from the choices that I've made, but it's partly a privilege too. Um, I think a big part of that was just luck. Basically, I think I was able to remain innocent for a long time. Um, I didn't have to confront the real world until I left my parents' house. And even then, that was in the environment of going to college, where you're still very supported. I think another thing um, that has been lucky in my life is that I've basically known what I've wanted to do with my life since high school. Since my later years in high school, I knew that I was going to make movies for a living. Didn't know exactly what path that would take, um, but I've been able to work towards that goal since I was about 16 years old. And I think it has kind of put me ahead in life a little bit. So the more I learn about Amy's story and then comparing it to my life story and just seeing how our, um, our starting points were just not the same. Um, if I started at zero, she started at negative 20. And she has a lot to do just to catch up. And that's just what happens. The world is not really a fair place. And everybody starts out at different points in life. But I think the thing that is the most important is our attitude. Um, because our attitude is something that we can control. Amy has been a victim many times in her life. But she has chosen not to take that victim mentality and just roll over every time something bad happens to her. Um, she has chosen to be a fighter. She has chosen to be strong and to keep going and to not let anything stop her. And I think that's why she's at where she is today. She could have very easily gone down a path in life that involved drug addiction, um, maybe even suicide, being in jail, teen pregnancy. She could have gone down any of one of those paths. But because she chose to take responsibility and she chose to better herself and her situation, um, I think she's all the better for it. And I think those situations in her life are only going to make her stronger in the long run. In some strange way, I almost feel guilty that my life has been so good because I've never really had any real hardship in my life. And I think that's a big part of the reason why I started through hiking. Something like this that is extremely hard. Uh, it helps me build the character and the perseverance, the inner strength that um, some of the more challenging times of Amy's life have done for her. I do believe that everybody needs um, real struggle in their life. I think it's absolutely necessary for character building and to just become a fully well-rounded person. 
We live in a society today where a lot of people have the luxury of not having any real hardship. Um, and that's great. It's really, really says something about how far we've come as a species and a society. But because our biological systems have been wired through evolution to respond to hardship and to grow and get stronger through hardship, um, I think we still need that in our lives. And if you're one of those people who is lucky enough to not have any hardship in your life, I think it's very important to seek that out voluntarily. That's a very lucky position to be in because then you get to choose exactly what kind of hardship you want and you get to choose something that's manageable for you. So I recognize that I have been very fortunate in my life. And the older I get, the more people I meet, the more life situations I encounter, the more um, grateful I am for my life situation, for my good childhood, for my good parents, for the good people in my life. Not everybody gets that. But I'm also grateful that I get to introduce this form of hardship into my life that we call through hiking. I think that kind of fills the gap of those extra challenges that I need in order to um, fully develop myself as a person. How's that for some tasty water? It's kind of pretty actually. like today is going to be kind of just a long boring day. These are the days where you're just in your head the whole day. Lately I've been trying to practice um, quieting my thoughts. My mind is usually very busy focusing on things that are really just not important and things that I don't need to give energy to. Um, lots of worries, lots of um, ruminating over things from the past. So lately I've been trying to um, do more meditative walking. Quieting the mind is a very hard thing to do, but it's a very valuable thing to do. I think it is probably one of the best ways to reduce anxiety, is to be able to have a little bit of control over your thoughts and to be able to stop the thoughts that are not useful. Some of my methods for doing this are very similar to uh, methods for meditation. I'll be paying attention to my breath, trying to put all my focus on my breath and nothing else. And it's just a way to occupy your mind with something extremely simple um, so that it kind of keeps other thoughts from coming in. And I still need a lot of practice in this area. I'm still not very good at it. Um, but there are times when you achieve a state of what I would call mindlessness, where there are no extraneous thoughts coming into your mind. All you're doing is living purely in the moment and experiencing everything around you. You're not judging things. You're not thinking about anything. You're just feeling things. And it's an incredibly relaxing state to be in, but it's very hard to maintain. I think the wilderness, and hiking especially, um, is a very, very good environment for practicing these things because there are very little distractions out here. I think that's one of the biggest defining features of the wilderness when you compare it to modern society, is that there are very few distractions out here. And that's very hard to find in modern society. I think we underestimate how important that is just to be undistracted for a little bit. I'm seeing more and more bear poop on the trails. We're getting pretty close to Yellowstone. I just ran into a couple other hikers who said they ran into two grizzlies earlier today. So they're out here.
Well, the rest of the section is all road walking. When I woke up this morning, I had 30 miles left. I was planning on leaving about 8 miles for tomorrow. But then I thought, maybe I'll leave 5 miles for tomorrow and get in a little bit earlier. And then I thought, well, it's only 5 miles. Maybe I'll just do those miles and get all of that done today. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, Amy's going to meet me at the highway crossing, and then she'll just pick me up, and we'll go to Brooks Lake from there. That way I get to sleep in a real bed tonight, and probably eat some good food. You're sexy. You looking for a ride? Yeah. Hi, honey. <laughs> what a coincidence. Yeah. That's nice. How convenient. Oh. She just scratched your car so bad. <laughs> I'll be out here by myself for about four days. I think it's like 70 miles from Brooks Lake to our pickup point in Yellowstone. This is how you know that you're really in the wilderness. And there's no bridges for bigger rivers like this. It's not very deep, but I have to get over there. Took a little side trip off of the CDT, just about half a mile down to this uh, slot canyon. This is so cool. I haven't seen anything like this on the CDT yet. Even though I'm in a hurry, we're trying to get miles in as quick as possible. Still worth it to take these side trips. This does a lot more for the morale than getting a bunch of miles in. Well, apparently this is not a very safe place to be. I don't know if I caught that or not, but I just saw a tree fall over, like a big one. Hiking through a burned area, there's a lot of standing dead trees, and there's a thunderstorm rolling in quick. I need to get through here fast so I can find a place to set up. Falling everywhere. Okay, that's the third one to fall in like five minutes. Another one, four. And now the rain is starting. I found my clearing, but it's also clearing in the sky. That might have been a very short thunderstorm. So now I've got a choice to make. Do I take advantage of the clear weather and set up camp now? Um, it's almost the end of the day, but it's a little bit too early to stop. Or do I take my chances and hike for another hour or so? I think I'll take a lesson from Amy here. I'll set up camp early tonight. Early enough to have a fire tonight.
My mom sent us a bunch of these freeze-dried dinners. I can't tell you how good this is compared to the dinners that we normally eat out here. This makes such a big difference. I actually look forward to dinner every night now. So last night I made a little offering of tobacco, which I have been doing most nights, and um, with it a little prayer. This is a new habit to me that I picked up on this hike. Um, I've never, never been the person to pray or participate in any sort of uh, religious rituals like that, I suppose. Part of this journey is to get in touch with a spiritual dimension, so this is my attempt at doing that. Um, so last night, when I made my offering, I prayed for clarity. The past few weeks, basically since we've gotten to Wyoming, um, there has been so much uncertainty in this hike. Our motivation to continue hiking uh, declined around then. Amy's body kind of quit on her right around that time too. That was the reason why we went home, to go get the cars. Um, I think that provided the change that we needed to inspire us to keep going. We needed something that was going to make the hike a little bit easier. Um, the cars have done that for a while. But at the same time, I think once we made that decision to go get the cars, we kind of made the decision to uh, step away from this being a through hike. Um, we turned it into something else at that point. But I think it was a necessary decision, and I do think it was the right call. With Amy being in so much physical pain, she hasn't been to hike as much as she would like to. Um, that's making her feel like a failure. In order to keep doing the hike, we've had to separate, so I've been hiking solo. And I think it has separated us in a time when she needs me the most. She's having a lot of doubts about what she's doing out here. She feels like a failure. She feels like she's not achieving what she came out here to achieve. Mostly what she's experiencing is suffering. Whether it's mental or physical, um, that's not what we came out here to do. I'll admit that I have enjoyed some of this solo hiking. I just know that for me, personally, I need quite a bit of alone time in my life. That's that's just how I recharge. I'm an introvert. But now I'm on, I think, my fourth section hiking by myself. And now it's starting to feel kind of lonely or almost hollow, I guess. It's starting to feel like the only point of me hiking by myself is to do the miles. Just doing the miles is very low on our priority list. That's not what we came out here to do. I think Amy needs some of my support in order to do the healing that she came out here for and um, my personal growth involves learning to be more of a partner and it's hard to do that when you're by yourself. Feels like we've kind of been limping along ever since we reached Wyoming. Looking ahead, I don't think that we can limp along like this for another state. And Montana is even bigger than Wyoming. When I look forward, if I'm being realistic, I see a few different paths that we might go down. I think most likely is that uh, Amy's knees don't allow her to hike most of the miles of the rest of the CDT. And as a result, I would have to hike the rest of the miles pretty much, which would leave Amy just kind of sitting there in a car. I think that would make both of us feel pretty bad. I also see all of this uncertainty. It's stressing us out a lot. Now that we don't know how the rest of the hike is going to go, we don't know how much of the hike we're going to be able to do, we don't know what the weather's going to do, 
we're pushing our end dates way farther than a reliable weather window would allow. Um, at our pace, it looks like we'll be hiking into November. Um, so the snow is always on our mind. When is winter going to come? All of that uncertainty is stressing us out. And we don't do it on purpose, but I think we're taking it out on each other at times. So last night, I asked for some clarity. Um, my mind has been very cluttered lately. I haven't been I haven't been very sure about many things lately. When I think about the future, I see a million different paths branching off in every direction, and I don't know which one to take. So I've been thinking about that all morning, and then an idea popped into my head. It's an idea that I think I've been avoiding for a long time. It's not an idea um, that is going to make either one of us happy, but once the idea came into my head, I felt clarity. I felt some weight lifting off my shoulders, and I'm afraid that it might be the right path. And that path is that we have to quit. I think this hike needs to be over. We could remain stubborn. We could keep going. It wouldn't kill us. Um, but I think it might break us. And that's a hard thing to admit. I'm always searching for ways to keep going. That is my natural instinct. What's going to take to keep going? And I think I've exhausted all my options at this point. If I'm going to be realistic, I need to accept the facts. And the facts are telling me that um, continuing on is not the right choice. It's going to crush both of us to give up on this idea of completing the CDT. We've been saying since the beginning that that's not why we're out here. And I think we need to stay true to our words and actually listen to these priorities that we set down a long time ago. I think the idea of being home is starting to become very tempting for both of us. To have that stability of um, going home to the same place every night, having the same bed every night. I think we're both ready for that. And I think what we'll do is um, follow the CDT through Yellowstone. Uh, once we get to the border, we'll make up our own route, which will allow us to literally hike to this house. Um, that might be kind of a cool way to end this hike. Nice wolf tracks.
I didn't think I'd be able to do any beach walking on the CDT. This is kind of a cool surprise. Well, this may look like a regular creek, but it's about 100 degrees. And I'm going to soak in it. I have seen signs around Yellowstone saying that you're not allowed to soak in the hot springs. Uh, but I just talked to a ranger this morning and he said that you are allowed to soak in hot springs like this, but you're not allowed to soak in thermal features. Usually the thermal features are like 200 degrees anyway, so you wouldn't want to soak in those. But a river like this is okay. And this is so cool. I've never seen anything like this. One thing that's concerning is that the water is full of these tiny little red worms. Hopefully those don't burrow into my brain or something. Ha <laughs> ha